This episode brought to you by preparewithdronetech.com. And right now, you can save $50 off a four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000-plus calories a day. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well equipped, as well equipped as any army in the world, and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. But I trust the capacity of the Afghan military, who is better trained, better equipped, and more re more competent in terms of conducting war. Yes. Mr. President, thank you very much. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's gonna be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comparable. All right, normally I'd have some sort of an attempt at humor here, but there's nothing funny about any of this. Even White House mouthpiece Jake Fapper couldn't hold back his criticism, even if it was very blunted compared to what we would have seen if Trump were overseeing this disaster. The state of our union is watching a tragic foreign policy disaster unfold before our eyes. Weeks before the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and the deadline for President Biden's complete withdrawal of U.S. service members, the Taliban are laying waste to all the gains in that country, having seized much of Afghanistan, the Taliban are now at the gates of the capital city of Kabul. Obviously, the Taliban have already taken Kabul. This was from yesterday afternoon, which just goes to show how quickly this has happened. Also, why the hell do people keep calling 9-11 an anniversary as if we're supposed to party and celebrate or something? And why the hell was 9-11 chosen and stated as the withdrawal deadline? Don't terrorists typically pick days like this to launch their attacks? Or in this case, prepare large-scale invasions that are ready for our retreat? That's a big part of the problem here. Things that are clearly obvious about all of this, for some reason, weren't in the public discourse. Or at least, not in the so-called mainstream media. While Tapper's gonna give Biden a little bit of criticism here, he's gonna cover the media's ass by claiming that media experts found the Biden regime's claims that this wouldn't be another Saigon to be unrealistic. So where were all those media voices? We all know that if the media wants to create a lot of buzz and focus on a specific person or a topic, they can do it. One need only look at the last four years and their nonstop resistance to Donald Trump. Instead, what we have here is a corrupt press whose main focus of scrutiny are Biden's critics. Rapid crumbling of the country has caught the Biden White House flat-footed. It is, of course, a sharp turnaround from six weeks ago when President Biden called it highly unlikely that the Taliban would overrun the country, an assessment that even at the time struck many experts in Biden's own administration as unrealistic. It seems shocking that President Biden could have been so wrong. It's not shocking, though. We all knew that this is what would happen. This is what always happens. It's almost like the media caters to people that don't have a basic knowledge of history and won't know any better. It happened in Vietnam. It happened most recently in Iraq. So why would now be any different? It is not at all comfortable. It's so obvious what would happen and what would happen in Iraq that I predicted it years before it happened. You see, what the Democrats are doing now is exactly what Republicans were doing in 1993 when Clinton was in Somalia and it was politically viable for the Republicans to go against the war, so they did. Even though they didn't really think it through and at the time they didn't really know that Al-Qaeda was really involved in Somalia, but it ended up being a huge blunder. What did leaving Somalia get us? It got us uh, terrorist attacks because Bin Laden used our retreat as a huge propaganda victory for recruiting and money. He launched a series of attacks that led up to 9-11. Uh, now Islamic extremists are fighting in, in Somalia and they're fighting against Ethiopia and you got a big war going on there. So I don't see how you can sit back now and say that we don't know that that's what would happen in, in Iraq and it would probably be much worse in Iraq. That's how obvious this all is. Yet this reanimated corpse that supposedly our president didn't know that that's how this would all unfold? Just to show you how pathetic our Democrat state media propaganda machine is, look at what NBC News thinks is the problem here. Still, helicopters continuously evacuated Americans and our Afghan allies to the airport throughout the day. 
an optical comparison Republicans have seized on as they continue to blast the president's foreign policy strategy. Oh, there's that old media trick of deflecting from their scandals by making criticism of them the scandal. Normally, though, instead of seized, they'd say pounced on, implying that making an issue of Democrat scandals or corruption is somehow wrong or mean. But you heard them there. The real issue here is the optics. Not the Afghans or the Americans that we're leaving to a hell on earth. I hope we get them out of there, but I don't have great confidence when we're apparently begging the Taliban not to attack us. Now, of course, the other completely outrageous thing that we're seeing now is the Biden regime and his media mouthpieces trying to somehow blame Trump for all of this. Trump is not president. Trump is not executing this withdrawal. And I'm tired of hearing all these people try and claim that Biden's just executing Trump's plan. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris had already been out there promoting their plan for withdrawal before the election. And just quickly, this whole idea of a president being able to blame the former president for their problems, that only works one way. Anytime a Republican tries it, the media has none of it. And I thought that we had the Avenger team in the White House now. I thought the adults were in charge. I was talking to a Democrat who just said this also felt like the Avengers. It felt like we're being rescued from this, this <laughs> craziness that we've all lived through from the last four years. And now here are the superheroes to come and save us all. Why didn't Biden change or delay the withdrawal? Is withdrawal even a good idea? Who knows? Because the media never raises that question. I'd personally suggest that we not left at all. Forget the forever war stuff, okay? We spent billions of dollars there, thousands of lives, and basically stabilized the situation. I don't think there had even been any combat deaths this year. And also keep in mind that all the people that are there are volunteers. These are people who want to be there. Why would we spend so much money and blood there just to pick up and leave? Which, by the way, leaves us in the same situation that we were in before the war even started. And worst of all, we've now emboldened them emboldened them and left them with tons of modern weaponry, aircraft, aircraft trainers, and lots of guns. In what alternate universe can we not expect the exact same thing to happen again? Especially with the US looking so weak and lacking leadership. We're inviting attacks from all our enemies. Oh, look at that. China is working with the Taliban. All right, folks, that's all I have in me for this one. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments.